Well, the thing is, if, if she's... If their opponent if, has a minion, it's pretty good. Well, the thing is, and this is my point, if it's not good yet, it will be eventually. Yes. Like, uh, other cards might just never be good over the course of a game. Azurai basically says, if they're ever going to be playing any sizable creature or any small creature that they care about, which is always, I'm going to be good at that point. I mean, this is a 10-cost card that I'm not even unhappy having in my starting hand. Yeah, the funny, also the funny thing about his ability is that of all the dragons, he his ability is probably, when you first see it, you're pr it's probably the most underwhelming ability. Yeah, but then you realize play, how awesome it is. It is actually the, by far the best. Yeah. Right. Okay, so uh, let's move on. Um, so these were like the typical removal cards uh, and then I added these that have last words or gifts that also uh, can act as removal and I realize now that we already talked about all the dragons uh, except for the <laughs> green one, well the green one is not really removal anyway. Um, so there are a bunch of cards that can act as removal but not really the same turn they are played like Plague Bearer uh, or that's the only one, I guess. And then all these beautiful red and yellow cards that deal damage to enemies when they enter the uh, enter the board. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people run Plague Bearers, and I'm still not sure about that card. Which one? Plague, Plague Bearer. Bearer. Oh, queue up against me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's a good it's a good effect, but it's also an effect that your opponent can control when it goes off. Yes, uh, which is, but on the other hand, it's, uh, it can deal 4 damage to a minion and 2 to all the other minions. Yeah. I mean, yep. it, so, if they don't use a spell to remove it, uh, an event to remove it, or, or like a gift, uh, if they attack him to remove it, they will take 4 damage, which is... Yeah. That's the Pretty secret good. of the card, is that you can basically use this against a Mace Man, kill it, and then wipe their Harvesters, effectively. I mean, like, anyone playing Mace Man yeah. probably doesn't have Harvesters, but this is a good example of, like, how much value this card can get. And if they're removing it, suddenly every mana they spend, or every Faria, sorry, see, I work on so many different games <laughs> at once that I constantly switch resources. For every credit, Netrunner, they spend on this card... Um, that they're spending on their removal spell, that's basically discounting your board sweeper. Like, if they falcon dive it, you've now dealt two damage to everything for two Faria because of the net difference. Um, I gotta say, though, can we talk for just a second about Ground Shaker? <laughs> I know you'd oh, love to talk yeah. about Ground Shaker. Ground Shaker is uh, so good. Try, try to make it not too long. Uh, it used to be a 5-8. But yeah, go on. <laughs> it was not. Yeah, it was a 5-8 for one mountain for like a minute. Uh, <laughs> Back, back when we were just doing Pandora testing, where like some super powerful random you know epic card was not a problem, you know you drafted it or you drafted some other good epic card. But Ground Shaker is insane. If I could run a deck with thirty Ground Shakers, I probably would. Uh, <laughs> get better in multiples. You play them; they're threatening. You know we talked about how five life is where your your threats start getting safe. This is six life, so it's yeah. really safe. And five damage is when the is when you start getting really a lot of damage on the opponent's orb because you kill it in four hits. Yeah. So. This card trades well, it fights well, it, you know, and also it's you play it and it kills all their 1-1 one, one harvesters. Um, it just sweeps so much. One damage can make such a difference in red. Um, it's And if you just play one of these, like, every two turns, it, they just start stacking up. They get better in multiples. I mean, Ground Shaker is so good for punishing I mean, it's, people. It's a 5-6 it's a five, it's a five, six that, has a fa that has a better version of Famine attached to it. That's a great way of putting it. It's yeah. basically 4 Faria for a 5. If you think that Famine is good, Ground Shaker is basically um, Famine plus 4, four Faria and 2 Mountains for a 5-6. It's <laughs> a very strong card, and it also deals damage to structures, which is, yes. uh, it, it can be very yep. relevant. So it's like so much better than Famine ever will be. <laughs> I mean, this card is just completely nuts. Like I've said right now, if you just want to start winning games, Ground Shaker, just Ground Shaker, takes off protection. I mean, it's Falcon Dive, all your opponent's stuff, plus their structures and their orb. Like what the heck? Who <laughs> made this card? <laughs> By the way, uh, you missed one one giant important card in here. Uh, I know which one? Devouring Plant. That's, uh, I that's was, not removal. I mean, I, was I know you can about just adding as removal, it, uh, but it's not. It's uh, sort of. Uh, no. Uh, the thing is uh, that that taunts. Uh, I also didn't add death touch here, for example, which you could uh, okay. that they, they could be added. Um, but yeah, uh, true enough. But still, 
It's a bombing plant, so good. The bombing plant uh, can't be used as harvester <laughs> removal very conditionally, but that's not its main use. And if you're using it for that, yeah. usually you're behind. You're using it mostly for its wool, but it does have still that removal element. Uh, it is yeah. It is just the best card in the, the game. There's that. probably more cards like that that I did not include. Yeah, um, but, but that was the one that popped out. Yeah. Anyways, uh, but yeah, Ground Shaker, one of the best red, if not the best, well, after the Vowing Plant, the best red card. I would I say think. that. Uh, okay, and these cards are, I mean, they're pretty straightforward. We don't have to talk too much about it. Maybe I yeah. have to get going. Play, uh, things like Blazing Salamander and Bomb Sling and Shite of Vampires are, they, they can be very powerful, but they can also be played around. But the biggest thing about these cards is they're psychological. Yeah. So, the, same with the Devouring Flame. And if you have a ton of fairy, a day of the dragons is insane removal also. You just play <laughs> it, and the blue dragon, red dragon. Um, so, yeah. Well, but uh, I think the bear, most important thing about these uh, AoE cards, uh, the so the Blaze Salamander, Bomb Sling, and Shite Vampire, is that they are cards that you might know that not every deck has to run. Not every deck will run them. But uh, at one point, people will f either think like, okay, so they are definitely going to maybe play the Salamander, so I'm going to play around it. Yeah. Or they're like, I've never faced this card uh, anyway. They're never played anymore. So I'm just going ham and go to s stack up my creatures around this mountain. And, oh, wait, he still has a <laughs> Blazing Salamander. Well, yeah. fuck. That's, that, um... that's the beauty of these cards. Yeah, they are very, I mean, uh, they are very threatening to the opponent. Uh, they don't they don't n know if you have it, and that's what makes them so good. And even if they know that you have them, or suspect you have them, they, can st they still uh, give value, because the opponent make like less advancement on the map, maybe, yep. or they're more careful, which buys you well, more time. That, this was the fun thing on the test servers, it was that uh, Blaze Clan Mana Bomb Slinger, especially in the Arena or Pandora, the Bomb Slinger was very popular, then it was also better, it was cheaper, <laughs> still. Uh, but at one point, uh, so people started moving around to uh, those mountains, not not making sure to not, ha not have the opponent be able to blow shit up with these cards. Then people started to not play them anymore. <laughs> mm. uh, there is one last type of cards that I want to talk about that could be used as removal-ish, and that's haste creatures. Uh, th the great thing about haste creatures is that you can play it, pick up Feria. If you play the Ninja Toad, you can pick two Feria um, and uh, attack th the opponent to remove a threat, and you might even survive. Uh, the downside, of course, is taunt minions, which can mess that up. Um, and of course, you can argue that um, like certain combo tricks can be used to remove minions, like Triton Banquet or anything really yeah. that buffs your uh, But uh, if I wanted to make a list like that, it would just take way too long. So I just chose to not. Um, yeah, the thing about haste creatures is that they are they are situational removal. Uh, they are they are great, but they're mostly great because of their versatility. Because you can use them in different ways. You can use exactly. them to attack, the, deal in massive damage to the orb. You can use them to play them and buff them up to crazy height, and then attack the orb, or maybe attack another creature, a big creature, remove that land and invasion. And yeah. they can harvest feria. So even after the after they've done their thing, like it hit the orb, they can hit it again, or they can go and farm feria. They can kill blood obelisks. I mean, like these things. Blood, uh, yeah. And uh, by uh, um, using haste soldier. creatures as a removal, is uh, you don't only remove, but you also gain a creature on the board. And another nice fact. Survives. Another nice fact is all haste creatures have a maximum of free attack. I think they just all have free attack. No, no, wait. There's one with zero attack. 
yeah, Bob like got they, as free attack against you all. So that's one of the things is again we wanted haste creatures are very dangerous because they come out of the hand. You have to know about them in advance before you're dealing with them. Um, so what we did was we wanted to make sure they dealt enough damage to be threatening, but enough that you know you had to get hit by seven times with them before you're actually dead. So that gives you a lot of warning. Hmm. So we try to keep them all at three attack to make sure that you don't have to think about seventeen different cards that all work in slightly different ways. Um, I do want to say though that Hithlum has been having amazing success with his yellow control deck and Wind Soldier. I think has gotten a little underappreciated with the um, was always an amazing card by the way. Yeah, but the thing about it is it's so good in the yellow rush strategies yep. that I think people have just been expecting to focus on that and not looking Indeed. at it as a removal tool. And I was thinking I'm looking at like vicious control decks and I just the other day after looking at Hitlum's list I'm like why the heck don't you run wind soldiers in these vicious control decks. I mean, it's just flame burst on a stick, and that flame burst is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, by the way, Hitler's well, right. Ostrogoth does have 13 attack. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ostrogoth. But Ostrogoth is special. We don't consider him really a haste I mean, creature because it's really his structure. We can't even unbound <laughs> evolution into an Ostrogoth. So. Right. Like, the thing is, you can see it coming for like far, four turns by definition. <laughs> Krog, <laughs> Krog will always be Krog. <laughs> and it'll always be useless. <laughs> All right. So, to sum things up, if you want to build a deck that uh, doesn't get punished too much by removal, you want to try to get uh, five health on your minions. Unless they are neutral, then you want to have six health. Uh, yeah. And if you have four attack or more, it's also going to be more difficult. To and you want to cost less than six fairy or yes. eight. Yes. And it uh, should. Uh, yeah. It, if it has three or above attack, it's also good against. It. Yeah. Keep an eye out, basically, for de just look at last nightmare, choking sands, uh, devouring flame and Firebomb, and just find cards that you're not too upset if they get hit by any of those Fire cards. Firebomb actually, isn't actually used that much. No, no, but you need to know about it, because 40 yeah, damage is a single target it. thing. Yeah. Um, you're probably pretty safe with Firebomb currently, but that those are the real removal spots. The f um, so just look at those cards. Oh, and Punishment, of course. But punishment. just look at those slots, and if you're okay, if you're not hit by any of those main things, that you either, tr either that, you know, you cost less than the card, so it's okay, or that um, you dodge its, effect its most effective thresholds, that's a card that's very, very competitive. Yeah. All right. I have to get going. Thank you guys for yep. joining me. And I hope yeah, no problem. Can, uh, it was fun. Again yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it took about time, uh, maybe a little one bit hour more time than I was expecting. But <laughs> <laughs> um, so That's my yeah. fault, sorry. <laughs> no, no, to be no, fair, no, it's, it's, those things to always you. happen. <laughs> thanks to you, not your fault. Uh, okay. This, it got better this way. I, I really think we got, uh, uh, we got a lot... Uh, thoughts out thanks to you and uh, without you we probably wouldn't have thought the derelict tower was the best card in the game but now we do <laughs> it is well, that, that, wrong that's, it's not that's, the best card <laughs> no that still goes to uh, to a devouring plant we'll see about that okay oh, hit them trolling sorry about that hit them <laughs> all right guys uh i'm off and um see you guys uh, in feria good night yep. see you. Go play some games all right bye bye